So you had a question that you got wrong. Question about basically what will happen if we will give patient too much oxygen when the patient mm -hmm. having chronic obstructive lung disease. Mm -hmm. And you know that in chronic obstructive lung disease, when we're giving patient too much oxygen, that's not very good. Why mm -hmm. is that? What's the end effect? What's the fear? For well, you hyper you increase the carbon dioxide. Yes, and yes, how would the, does it call it? Hyper uh, carbia hyper or capnia. capnia or hyper capnia, yes. Yeah. yeah, we'll cut this part again. Yes, I, I, I did you Google what is hyper capnia? No, hyper -capnia? I was thinking about it, but I never ah, actually did. We should do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Hyper capnia that's what mm -hmm. we're very afraid of. Why are mm -hmm. we afraid of hypercapnia in a patient? Why are we afraid of hypercapnia? Because um, it's the same thing, by the way, hypercapnia, hypercarbia. It's the same thing, yeah? Oh, that's so you got like, one less thing to remember. One less thing to remember. OK, anyway, <laughs> that makes our last easier. Now we know. Yeah, so mm -hmm. why are we afraid of hypercarbia or hypercapnia? So basically, you will, you'll get acidosis, and all your enzyme will shut down or stop working. Yes, very good. Like half of our enzymes will shut down. And mm -hmm. hypercapnia or hypercarbia mm -hmm. in COPD can be caused by three mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Three mechanisms, right? Not just mm -hmm. one, but mm -hmm. three mechanisms. And you yeah. can see that they're all on this picture. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the most hardest one, because like sure. we always should start with something that's really hard. Get used to doing hard things. So that's what's happening. I made this picture like like, not, not like fully me, but I annotated it. I can do that. I annotated it. Yeah. So basically, normally, uh, our alveoli should have what concentration of of oxygen will be in alveoli normally? Oh, it'll be a hundred. It will be. Uh, it is it high? Should it be high or low? It should be really. It should be high. It should be high. Very good. And what about concentration of carbon dioxide and alveoli? Uh, should it well, be, compared to oxygen, it's low. It's between 35 to 45. -ish. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, but what's happening in emphysema, Jessica? Please tell me. So in emphysema, there's more carbon dioxide because you're in, not exhaling it out, so you're retaining it. Yeah, very good. But why we're retaining carbon dioxide? In well, that's because you're unable to exhale it out. We are and able also, to exhale because there is a destruction of what? Of the, there's destruction of the alveolar wall. Yes, so very good. So our alveoli, they are very tiny and they yeah. are very collapsing very quickly. And mm -hmm. they exhaling all this air. But exactly. when there is a destruction of alveolar walls, our mm -hmm. alveoli cannot properly, just, just they just cannot collapse properly. That's what's mm -hmm. happening in emphysema. In the, like mm -hmm. in pro, in pre, in predominant type of COPD. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jessica, what's very important to understand here is just in this alveolar walls, there is what? The, it, it is not only alveolar walls. So what what mm -hmm. else is like- They have their own capillaries. Yes, they have capillaries. So when we're having destruction alveolar, of alveolar walls, we don't mm -hmm. only decrease the elastic force of the lungs. We're also mm -hmm. decreasing what? Uh, you don't. You also decrease the diffusion membrane. We and th that's called uh, area. Area. That's called area. Very good. So we, when we're destructing alveolar walls, we're also destructing area. Mm -hmm. So uh, as you said cor completely correctly, that after destruction of alveolar walls, mm -hmm. our ventilation will be decreased into this mm -hmm. alveoli, and our mm -hmm. ventilation is basically a respiratory rate over what? Ventilation is, a re oh, you mean the formula for ventilation? Yes, yes, what's ventilation? Like any ventilation. For tidal, um, tidal yes. volume times tidal, the respiratory Ventilation is tidal volume over respiratory rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, tidal volume, it's the volume that we inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. When we cannot exhale, our ventilation will just drop. Please, uh, please tell me, if there will be a decrease in ventilation, mm -hmm. what will happen to alveolar oxygen if there is a decrease it will decrease and what will happen to alveolar carbon dioxide it will increase it will increase very good. so and now uh, look at this picture please and we having poorly ventilated alveoli and we have good ventilated alveoli because mm -hmm. these alveoli are poorly ventilated what will happen to their capillaries 
uh, if they're poorly ventilated, they will um, vasoconstrict. They will vasoconstrict because why they vasoconstrict? Because there's there's no so they're poorly ventilated means there's less less oxygen mm -hmm. in the way like they're they're unable to diffuse the oxygen is unable to diffuse. And so they, they think it's hypoxia, and that leads to vasoconstriction and shifts, diverts the blood to other so cells. It's just, it's just a very cool feature of our pulmonary vasculature, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in pulmonary vasculature, when there is low oxygen, alveoli constrict. Mm -hmm. What's happening in systemic circulation? They vasodilate. They vasodilate. Like when, can you give me an example, please? Uh, like where? Or yes, like any example of vasodilation. Skeletal muscle and What's under. Happening there? What's happening there? So there's uh, mediators that are causing vasodilation to increase uh, perfusion, perfusion to that, to increase uh, flow and perfusion to that area. Yes, so just basically our skeletal muscle just sending signals that uh, we, mm -hmm. we need more oxygen here, guys. Mm -hmm. Yes, and mm -hmm. capillaries start to vasodilate and more blood mm -hmm. like entirely start to vasodilate. Just more blood is coming to the skeletal muscles. Mm -hmm. All right, please look at the, at the left picture. Mm -hmm. Our poorly ventilated alveoli will have very low oxygen content and mm -hmm. uh, very high carbon dioxide content mm -hmm. because this carbon dioxide is just cannot go out into mm -hmm. the atmosphere. It, it, it just cannot be pushed out of into the atmosphere. So pulmonary arteries near this poorly ventilated alveoli will mm -hmm. constrict and where all this blood goes it cannot go like it cannot dissipate into the void mm -hmm. where the blood will go from the poorly ventilated alveoli to where it'll go to the well ventilated it will go to well ventilated alveoli mm -hmm. and what it will create oh it'll oh it'll be um, perfusion limited so it'll basically um what will it create? A VQ mismatch is what it essentially will create. VQ mismatch, yeah. very good. So it will create a VQ mismatch. Mm -hmm. uh, when two times the amount of blood is going mm -hmm. through one, just one alveoli. So it will create a VQ mismatch. And it is, Jessica, is the cause of what in COPD? It is cause of? Oh, hypoxia. Hypo... Hypoxemia, sorry. Hypoxia, I agree with you. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. hypoxemia. And that is the cause of hypoxemia mm -hmm. here. It is VQ mismatch. But when we are giving, like imagine we like the patient coming to you with severe hypoxemia and mm -hmm. we want to like to, to treat him well. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're giving him a lot of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Will this poor limited alveoli, like instead of 150 millimeters of oxygen, we're giving a patient like 760 millimeter of mm -hmm. oxygen. And Jessica, please tell me. 760 millimeters of oxygen is uh, what percentage? 100%. It is 100%. Yes, this is like when mm -hmm. all the air is oxygen. Mm -hmm. So we are giving the patient 100% oxygen. And this 100% oxygen, it can increase oxygenation of this poorly ventilated alveoli. Mm -hmm. What then will happen? Please tell me. Then uh, the, the pulmonary capillaries will vasodilate, and so the blood that was going originally to the normal alveoli is coming back to the um, coming back to the what's it called faulty alveoli. Yes. But and then yes. And then that will also um, cause it can also lead to. I mean, I don't know. It might be able to exacerbate the hypoxemia. And yes, first of all, look uh, this part. Poorly ventilated alveoli will create additional hypoxemia because of what, which mechanism? Uh, same mechanism because you're originally giving, taking blood away from the normal alveoli that's working, you're bringing it back to the defective one. Yes, and defective alveoli, is it uh, poorly oxygenated? It can't, it can't diffuse the oxygen into it. But so it'll just, is it poorly oxygenated or is it well oxygenated? No, it's well, it's oxygen. well oxygenated, it's but then the area well for oxygenation is... Yes, but area for oxygenation is decreased. Mm -hmm. So we just cannot properly oxygenate mm -hmm. this, uh, uh, this blood that's coming, uh, that's mm -hmm. coming to it. Mm -hmm. uh, what will create a diversion of blood from normal oxygenated alveoli, what it will create. This blood came mm -hmm. to this faulty alveoli. Mm -hmm. And so we basically decreased perfusion 
of our mm -hmm. normally normally ventilated alveoli. And right. when we decrease in the perfusion, what are mm -hmm. we increasing? Oh, dead space. Dead space, yes. And mm -hmm. it will cause it will cause what? So it will increase dead space. It will, what does it cause? It causes hypercardia. It will cause yeah. hypercardia. Yeah. Very good. It will just cause hypercardia. Yes, and because it won't be able to diffuse anyway. Yes. Yeah. It, it it will cause hypercarbia because of the uh, here is also the vacuum is much mm -hmm. Jessica it is also vacuum is much mm -hmm. why the here will be vacuum is much after vasodilation because now you're take, sealing away the perfusion so there is ventilation yes. but very good we're just sealing away the perfusion that's why and mm -hmm. as you know that dead space will cause hypercarbia mm -hmm. shunt will cause uh shrimp will hypoxia or hypoxemia hypoxemia very good yeah. i agree hypoxia is is like hypoxemia is just like a cause of hypoxia yeah. i agree with mm -hmm. you yeah mm -hmm. just like don't confuse it yeah jessica yeah okay uh, <laughs> anyway that is the one cause of mm -hmm. hypercapnia uh, when we're giving patient with copd too much oxygen can you tell me please what is happening with respiratory rate of patient with COPD? Um, the respiratory, okay, so now after we give oxygen, is that what you're asking? Uh, let's first, uh, I didn't answer you this question last time. Please tell me uh, logically, what should happen to a respiratory rate when the patient with COPD, like logically, what should happen? Like when, you, when you're giving him supplemental oxygen? No, 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 or no, 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 what, normally, patient having a COPD. He it would like, increase it will increase like logically of course it's mm -hmm. logically mm -hmm. but why normally not logically why normally all the people with copd when the, uh, the people with copd doesn't have any exacerbations mm -hmm. for this copd because copd can exacerbate at some point of the time mm -hmm. why patient with copd actually having lower respiratory rate than general population that's because i guess it's because there's more um so there's how do i <clears throat> isn't it because of um if you have too much carbon dioxide but that would that would inf that would cause um but too much carbon dioxide causes um sends more signals which in turn would increase it i don't know jessica look uh what is the main stimuli for respiratory drive for increasing of respiratory rate is, it, hypo is it hypoxemia or is it uh, hypercarbia it's hypercarbia isn't it it is hypercarbia it is not mm -hmm. hypoxemia mm -hmm. hypoxemia like oxygen it should fall really low like to 60 millimeters of hydrogen to cause mm -hmm. increase in respiratory rate mm -hmm. carbon dioxide can increase to like 50 from 40 mm -hmm. and it will in our respiratory rate will be super 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 yeah. high mm -hmm. again like what's normal uh pao2 uh big a Probably. it has to be like 98 to 100. yes 90 90 okay 100 millimeters mm -hmm. of hydrogen it will mm -hmm. cause increase in the respiratory rate only if it will drop 40 by 40 millimeter of hydrogen by 40 mm -hmm. only then it will increase respiratory rate but our hypercarbia it can increase like what's what's normal carbon dioxide concentration 35 45 yes like 45 but when our pco2 start to increase mm -hmm. it can increase only by five and it will like fire up our respiratory center Again, Jessica, respiratory rate is is a function of our uh, uh, mainly. It's mainly a function mm -hmm. of our carbon dioxide, not our oxygen. Oxygen will will fire, will help us increase respiratory rate uh, when we have a very low oxygen. Mm -hmm. So, and patient with COPD, mm -hmm. patient with COPD, they living with increased carbon dioxide or mm -hmm. or decreased carbon dioxide increase carbon dioxide increase so and what's happening then so if you have increased carbon dioxide mm -hmm. i guess you would oh i know why now i remember they depend on um oxygen for their respiratory drive 
They depend right? on what? They're, so they so patients with COPD depend on oxygen for their respiratory drive, not oh, carbon yeah, dioxide. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You are one hundred percent correct. By but why? Why are they dependent to for oxygen? Please tell me. We have like one one because you already one have li little connection. Why? Uh, why? Because they have because they're hypoxemic. They already have increased carbon dioxide. Mm, because no? because the medullary respiratory center got desensitized to oh, carbon okay. dioxide. Yes, okay, it got okay. desensitized. Like uh, uh, under normal condition, people with fifty millimeters of hydrargyron of PaCO2 mm -hmm. should have twenty respiratory mm -hmm. rate of twenty. It's like for example, for for example's sake. But like people with COPD under fifty millimeters of hydrogen of PaCO2, mm -hmm. they have a respiratory rate of 10 because mm -hmm. they get uh, their middle respiratory center get used to, got used to living with increasing PaCO2. Mm -hmm. Yes, they just get used to. And that is why, Jessica, that is why they dependent of oxygen. Because mm -hmm. like, yes, they start to depend on the oxygen because they got desensitized, desensitized to carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. That is why they start to depend on oxygen level. Mm -hmm. That is the second. And when we giving a patient, like imagine, when we're giving a patient with COPD, like super mm -hmm. big amount of oxygen, mm -hmm. what will happen to their respiratory drive? Well, in that case, you increase carbon dioxide even more. So then, what happens is, since you're already used to it, you will. It will increase carbon dioxide even more. And what mm -hmm. else it will increase? It will. Well, oxygen increase. Oxygen too will increase, and they, because they are relied on oxygen. Yeah. Now they can. They're going to be hypoventilated. They have. They will be like really hyperventilated, and mm -hmm. that is why we don't need to give like we we should give to, to patients with COPD oxygen, of course, when they mm -hmm. especially when they're hypoxemic, and we mm -hmm. should sustain their oxygen like at ninety one percent. That's relevant mm -hmm. for step one. But anyway, but we don't need to give a patient like large amounts of oxygen straight up when you mm -hmm. see them. Yes, we not should uh, we don't need to give all the patients with COPD oxygen. Uh, and please tell me about the third about the third part of our equation about the hypercapnia and the patient with COPD who were giving a lot of oxygen what is it jessica i think it's the held in effect if you give it's too much held oxygen. In effect and what's held in effect basically so when in the lungs when you see there's too much or oh, what's it called when there's um basically what happens is when in the car in when there's oxygenation like in the lungs when there is more oxygen oxygen binds to hemoglobin and hemoglobin lets lets go of the carbon dioxide Yes, and can his carbon dioxide go got out in patient with COPD? No, they can't. So it'll because just be retained with what? It. Because of increased what? Increased dead space. Increased dead space. Yes, very good. Like the, fir the first one. That's how our first part of equation, second part mm -hmm. of our equation is connected. Mm -hmm. Do you get it, Jessica? Good. Think so. <laughs> you proud of yourself? I'm proud of myself. Yeah, I'm I'm proud like <laughs> ten times more. Of the, yeah, really. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Thank you a lot.